Hi YouTube, and this is JTrain997, back with another figure review. This time, the DC Universe Classics Wave 8 Build-A-Figure Giganta. I'll also be doing a review of the line as a whole. Now, when I heard they were doing a Build-A-Figure Giganta, I wasn't thrilled. Um, Giganta is a character that is just very one-dimensional to me. I wasn't really that excited for a Build-A-Figure over. Now, the figure is the tallest out of the wave. Um, to get a quick size comparison, there's Commander Steel right beside her. But um, really, the only gimmick she has going for her is she's so tall. Now, a little bit about the character. Um, Giganta originally appeared in the original Wonder Woman series, um, number nine. In the Golden Age, she was a um, gorilla a doctor had transferred into a strong woman. And later on, they gave her the ability to grow. And she could become gigantic. So, um, in the modern age, she was actually a scientist who, when Wonder Woman was, um, I forget if she was unconscious or dying, I can't remember which, she was a scientist who was going to transfer her mind into Wonder Woman's body so she could keep on living. Wonder Woman was, um, saved by Wonder Girl, and, um, Giganta's mind, or the daughter, she wasn't called Giganta at the time, was lost mid-transfer and stuck in the machine. One of her associates transferred her mind into the only available thing at the time, a gorilla named Giganta. Um, eventually, she was able to transfer her mind into a strong woman and later manifested the ability to grow. She, of course, doesn't have the um, leopard skin cave woman outfit. In the current series, she has a more of a jumpsuit, which I would have much rather seen than the giant cave woman in the dress. But overall, let's go on to the figure. Now, her articulation is her legs are really loose when they're connected, which is unfortunate. Um, standard range of motion. Same for both legs, of course. Um, her arms, if you rotate them too far up, are going to snap out of place. So I wasn't too thrilled about that. Standard range of motion for the arms. So let's get her to stand real quick. Yeah, with her shaky legs, sometimes standing can be difficult for her. Oh. And now she's standing at an angle. Sorry about that. Um, her head articulation is hindered in turning to the left because of her giant... Well, actually, it's hindered in turning to the left because of the um, strap on her top. It can turn to the... Um, well, it's the camera's left. It's her right. You'll see it won't turn well. It can look up and down. And it can turn to her left well enough, camera's right. So overall... I really don't see what the big draw about this figure is. Um, I know the character, the character is alright, but as far as the build a figure, the only thing she has going for her is she's tall. So I'm going to give her a 6 out of 10. I was disappointed, I feel they could have done better. Um, but overall, she's still an alright figure. Um, I felt with this line, usually the way DC Universe Classics draws me in is they'll have all these no names and they'll usually have um the Build-A-Figure be a more popular villain or so on. And this time it really seemed like I was buying the line more for the characters and the actual Build-A-Figure was just a bonus. So, 6 out of 10. I don't know how much she goes for on eBay, but unless you're a diehard Giganta fan, I say um, avoid getting a little, just don't go out of your way to get her. Now on to a review of the line as a whole. Of course, Citizen still is the first figure. He's your standard average figure, but I did like how the, um, Blue actually shines better. It's a lot glossier paint, and it really adds a little detail, a little nicer detail to the figure. Really liked him, and he was a great figure. Okay, figure two, Doctor Fate. I gave him a um, what was it? Got it written down right here. An eight. Um, I loved his hand attachment, especially how it projects from his hand. I thought I should have gone for the modern one, but I didn't have a choice because it came in a case, and so. Liked him. Everyone should definitely consider picking him up. I'm going to move this stand to the side here. Figure 3. Mr. Terrific. Probably the only disappointing figure in the entire wave. Um, not to say he wasn't a good figure, but he has more issues than the rest of them. And the more I have him on a shelf, the more these T-spheres love to fall out. So, he got a 7, and I don't recommend going out of your way to get him. Okay, figure 4. Vigilante. This was a surprising figure that I really loved. Um, thought he was fantastic. Thought the character was a great deal. Um, never thought we'd get this guy because he's such a dark character. I gave him a... 
eight and a half out of ten and highly recommend getting him okay and figure five parademon I'm really surprised I me mean, thought it wouldn't be a very good figure the legs get a little bit looser the more you mess with him but um still if you're just gonna take him out of the pack and pose him he's still a very nice figure to have gave him a eight and a half as well I believe okay gentleman ghost Probably the figure I wanted most out of the entire... Ah, oh, crap, his gun went behind the desk. One second. That took long enough. But, um, yeah, that actually illustrates one of the issues with this figure. His gun doesn't stay well in his hand, but this figure probably represents everything I love about the DC Universe Classics line. They're always looking for some new way to give you something you've never seen in a figure and always looking to impress you with a new sculpt. Love the body mold. Thought the accessories could have been held a bit better, but other than that, um... Well, the articulation is kind of hindered a little. But other than that, it's a really great figure that anyone who even doesn't like the DC Universe Classics line should consider picking up. Okay, and on to the final figure, Hot Girl. Um, the most surprising figure out of the entire wave, honestly. I gave her a 9. I don't know if I said Gentleman Ghost score them. I gave Gentleman Ghost an 8.5. Um, I gave Hot Girl a 9 because she just blew me away. I thought... um. With the female body sculpt and the wings, that the figure would be almost unposable. But it really did surprise me. She got a 9. She held the accessories almost perfectly. And really impressed me. Now, um, the next line is going to be have Wildcat and one of the two biggest ones I'm looking forward to. Green Arrow, Black Canary. Um, the build-up figure is going to be Camo. And it's going to have Mantis and a few other characters. Um, I'm really looking forward to them. And of course, um, Gigant is 10 inches tall, if I didn't mention. So overall, this is JTrain997 saying I'll see you soon, YouTube. On a side note, I forgot to rate the line as a whole. Um, I'm giving the line as a whole a 9. Um, and one other interesting thing I noticed, that all the heroes in this wave are actually legacy heroes, meaning that they've all passed their mantle down at least once. Um, there's now a Citizen Steel to Commander Steel. There's been multiple Doctor Fates. Mr. Terrific is actually the second Mr. Terrific. Um, Vigilante's passed his mantle down several times, and Hawk Girl is constantly reincarnated. So I thought that was interesting. Um, the next line is obviously going to have the build of figures going to be camo. Um, it's going to have Green Arrow, Black Canary, Wildcat, um, Mantis, and Deadshot, and another. I think I forget who the other guy is. Um, don't mention it. I'll have found out by the time I post this video. And of course. I paid $130 for this case. Now, I've got to say, at the time, I thought that was a little much, but I figured they'll never show up, so I'm going to save money by avoiding having to look for them. And I have to admit, if you have the cash laying around, this is a very good line to go for. Um, I reviewed all the DC Universe Classics now, with the exception of Wave 5 and Wave 3. I'll probably end up getting Wave 3 in a set. So this is JTrain997. The line as a whole gets a 9 out of 10, and I'll see you soon, YouTube.